you represent an enormous geographic district. How do you balance the needs of uh, the tribes in northern Arizona uh, with somebody in uh, in a in a booming city like Maricopa? Well, I, I, obviously there's different issues, but the, the bottom line is you represent everybody. I have staff uh, that uh, is throughout the district. Uh, they meet with the local people and my job is when I'm not here in Washington is to get out and uh, do what I do best and that's to be out with people. You don't, you don't represent a big district like this and, and think that you can do it by only Zoom or just calling people up. You have to be out there and let people know, look at you right face to face and be able to judge you. Okay. How do you manage that time-wise with the, with the size of the district? Uh, there's a lot of car time yeah. and uh, we do it a regional basis. Uh, if I, if I come back and I have a week off, I'll be in the South or, or I'll be in the North or I'll, I'll be in the Eastern part of the district, uh, depending on how our schedule develops. But I'm never trying to go all over the place at one time unless there's, you know, I, I've scheduled for a Southern piece and all of a sudden there's a, something up North that uh, is a veteran event or an event for um, uh, uh, that's like a major fire or something like that. And you have to get there. I mean, you don't have an excuse to miss those types of things. So you, okay. you need to be there. Okay. Uh, you're on the agriculture committee, correct? Just left the meeting. Okay. Uh, what kind of hope can you give to farmers here in Pinal County uh, with their CAP allocations getting cut next year uh, for, for water? And, uh, and and walk me through that. Obviously, they can pump groundwater, but that's not a great long-term solution. How do you how do you think we should uh, be looking at that? Well, I've been working on water issues now for 20, 21, 22 years in Arizona. Uh, when I was in the legislature, I ran a lot of bills in relationship to management of water in this state, as far as conservation and, and uh, addressing drought and things like that. Got those passed. Uh, now it's a uh, always worked with the Colorado River issues and uh, whether it's CAP uh, the, uh, and the other entities like the ADWR, uh, Arizona Department of Water Resources, mm -hmm. uh, federal government, uh, the Bureau of Reclamation. So I have a ongoing knowledge of, of the issue. Uh, we have somebody permanently assigned to water issues down there in P Pinal County. Uh, we try to make as many of the meetings as we can we have an ongoing dialogue with uh, with uh, anybody involved in water in in uh, along the Colorado River, especially right now with the issue of the Colorado River. Uh, we've helped out in the past with uh, uh, trying to find funding for uh, the farmers down there. Uh, understanding their issues are are critical. Um, they're kind of in the firing line. I just had a discussion with the director of ADWR about a month ago about it. Um, oh, and, and by the way, the, the CAP was there also. Uh, but we we uh, we keep up to speed on it, and we uh, get our input into it. And obviously, being on the agriculture committee, uh, it allows us to um, have a voice uh, on a consistent basis with the secretaries involved. And now with the new administration, um, it's a, it gives me more of an ability to make sure I can highlight. Uh, those types of issues that are, you know, for Arizona, losing 500,000 acre feet of water plus is not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, the new information from the Colorado River um, uh, news report is is not uh, something that we we should just say, oh, well, it, it's going to happen. We have to continue to find ways. I've been an advocate for a long time that we have to be much more responsive and uh, looking out into the future for our water supplies in Arizona. Uh, we have the uh, Central Arizona Groundwater Replenishment uh, Plan that uh, has about 600,000 homes on it that do not have, uh, they're off of Colorado River water, but they're in AMAs that basically, uh, eventually they're gonna need Colorado River water. And they kept building and building and building and they're on groundwater right now. So uh, that, and they don't have the infrastructure to get to the canals. So this is a huge cost exposure. And we've been delayed time and time and time again and looking out into the future and saying, okay, are we gonna desalinize, whether it's the brackish water underneath 
uh, Arizona, which there's a lot of. It's not a, a permanent source, but the, the uh, technology is there now. Or are we going to go to a, a more permanent source? And that would be, um, I probably feel like the Sea of Cortez and uh, do the salinization down there. Uh, don't transport that water all the way up to Arizona. We'll transport it out of the Colorado River and replace what we do do through desalinization into Mexico, where we have a 1.5 million uh, acre foot uh, requirement to, to send to them. And historically, that requirement uh, has required, would require much more um, desalinization anyway, because it's, it's a terrible product once it gets down to Mexico. Given our uh, the, the the big issue here for uh, Maricopans is with 60, 65,000 of us here, and uh, most of us commuting to the valley for work, uh, is the is the three forty seven. Um, what do you see as the as the short and long term uh, issues there, and and where are we on federal funding for getting that widened or and or improved uh, beyond the overpass at Riggs Road? Well, we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction, uh, you know, whether it's the 347 and the other side of that, obviously, is the I-10. Both of those, uh, we've worked for a number of years on the I-10, and I think we got really lucky when uh, uh, Meg started to work on that issue also, because they have a, a role in making sure there's a, a commercial traffic flow that's appropriate for that area mm -hmm. and the growth factor in that area. And the 347, uh, that needs to be... A, um, a major arterial highway built as a freeway, not just uh, what we've seen over the history of time. Uh, I know that it's been uh, early on in my time in, in Congress, uh, and the, uh, the Gila and uh, the entities down there were having a little bit of tension, both because of the um, uh, lawsuits and so forth, because of the 202, uh, but um, that's, that's over with. And now their attention has turned on in a cooperative way uh, to address those issues uh, of the I-10 and uh, their 347. And that's why I brought the, uh, or requested and was able to get the Department, uh, the Secretary of Transportation out there, uh, what, about a month ago or so? Yeah. And we've been working on, on those issues uh, before then, obviously, but we wanted to highlight that for them, uh, that this is a critical process. And I know, whether I'm on to I-10 and going to Phoenix during rush hour in the morning mm -hmm. or coming out from Phoenix in the afternoons. And it's a terrible safety situation. The amount of accidents are, are not right, appropriate. Um, it's, it's one of the most critical corridors, both the 347 and the I-10 area there of, of uh, traffic accidents in, in all of America. And so, uh, it's, we've got their attention. Uh, we have to, we have to get ADOT's attention. Um, there are going to be some changes uh, over the next couple of years, but it has to be a, the vision has to be Maricopa is going to continue to grow. Um, there, it, it's to me uh, one of those areas where it's a, only because of land that's owned or controlled by the tribe or tribes. Is there a, <clears throat> not much more growth there right now, but there will be. The tribes want to grow, the, the, the city wants to grow. They're both under good management right now and, and uh, they both have a good voice and we're coming out with this infrastructure bill. We will get it out <laughs> because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm negotiating with the leadership on a day-to-day -day basis uh, right now. I meet with the, with the leadership team tonight um, and I do every Wednesday night uh, in order to make sure we have a, uh, our communications down of how do we get this bill out of Congress. Okay, um, that, le that leads me to my next question is yeah. you're obviously in favor of the, the 1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, or uh, I don't know the exact number now, but uh, um, what is in that bill that's going to benefit people of Pinal County and Maricopa specifically? And, uh, and, and do you in fact support that bill? I've, I've supported it all along. I helped design it. Uh, the broadband piece of it is a lot of my work uh, over the last four years, uh, 65, $64 uh, billion that's going to go into areas like Maricopa and Pinal County, rural areas, 
in tribal areas uh, throughout the state of people that don't have the ability to, to uh, compete economic development wise. It's not that Maricopa can't compete, but let's let them compete on a fair playing field and have the best service possible. Uh, and the same with any other area in our, in our state and in our nation that can't do that now. So you'll see that money go to uh, rural and tribal areas and to inner city areas that where people can't afford, the affordability factor is so low that there either has to be a public private partnership to lower those costs, or there has to be some level of subsidy uh, to make sure that uh, uh, every child in America doesn't have to go to um, the back end of a, a McDonald's or a public library at nighttime and do their homework. Uh, that's just uh, ridiculous in a country like America. And we need all the workforce development that we can to be able to compete worldwide and for Arizona throughout the United States. And, you know, we've been working for a number of years to continue to expand the educational ability of our state universities and others. Uh, by when I was in the legislature, we did a lot of investment into the university so that now we have two more huge facilities, $20 billion facility going up uh, on Intel. So you'll have six plants there. Obviously, it's going to be a big issue uh, for areas like uh, the city of Maricopa and the Pinal region. And so, um, and then we're still continuing to try to develop um, Lucid, Lucid and, uh, and some of the other entities uh, along that I-10 corridor and we'll continue to do that. But these, these issues, roadways, get that three lanes. I would love to see four lanes uh, because that's the, we need to jump ahead a little bit, not just build for today. And we, we also need to recognize that the, that corridor there between Tucson and Phoenix is going to be the, the corridor for the southwestern United States as we continue down the path where we're at. So economic development is critical, uh, but trans the infrastructure package is critical to that piece. I've also been in discussions with uh, 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 the railroad system down there. Uh, to They have a number of different ideas and concepts. And then we have some uh, plants that want to produce uh, natural gas and, and some other items. Um, that uh, we've worked with also. So okay. it's been a, a good process so far. Great. Two more quickly, because I know we're getting short on time. Uh, any, are you hearing anything about redistricting and how that's going and whether Maricopa will stay in your district or is that uh, out of your purview? Well, that's out of my purview. Uh, I, uh, I don't, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'm a competitive person and we'll go after it. Uh, I love uh, addressing the issues of Southern Arizona. Uh, and um, especially, it's uh, for me economically, uh, whether it's agriculture or industry, uh, clean industry, hopefully, uh, which we do have a lot of, uh, and, the, and the ability to help people, it's a great area to represent. Uh, and we're going to be able to do a good job with that uh, the next few weeks, especially. But uh, the larger context is um, my district has to, because Tucson, uh, District 2 in Tucson had to pick up 70 some thousand people or has to. Mm -hmm. I only had to find 23,000 people. Looks like the only place they can do that is taking in part of um, Orla um, Oral Valley or Saddlebrook, okay. a combination there of, and probably all of Moran. Uh, so the corridor and how we get down to those uh, other tribes down there, because the tribes do want to be together. Right, uh, and they've gotten good representation from me, and the um, and then I would love to keep Maricopa and Casa Grande that area in my district. I love it. Okay, uh, last one: uh, vaccine mandate. Uh, where do you stand on that issue, and uh, do you support it for businesses of, of a given size? And if, if so, what size would that be? I support the president uh, in in what he wants to do. Uh, I think if we're going to mandate things that uh, we shouldn't have businesses paying for it or anybody paying for it. We got to get this out to people and we got to get it out fast. Uh, people may think that, well, it's a variant, uh, we'll beat this variant and we don't have to worry. Uh, these variants are going to 
but be creeping up from time to time. So scientifically, we're getting a, a jump start in, in, in scientific uh, research, uh, much more than we had in the past, uh, making sure we have the facilities necessary to address these vaccines, well, not vaccines, but these viruses before they get to be pandemic stage, both in the country and worldwide through collaborative processes. Uh, but the underlying thing is, you know, we beat smallpox by vaccine. We beat polio by vaccine. These are major things. And, you know, I hate the thought process that we have to force people to, to take a vaccine because it's just not about me. I, I just had my third shot two days ago. And um, I think that uh, one of the reasons is I didn't want to get sick. I definitely didn't want to get other people sick. And we've lost almost 700,000 people in our own country. And many, many more than 700,000 have been impacted on a permanent basis uh, with pre-existing conditions now. And the cost of that is going to multiply in the years ahead. And God forbid we do have another pandemic because we have had a number of these issues come across. So. Uh, whether it's masks, uh, I wear a mask. I just came from the committee meeting. I wear a mask in the committee meeting, unless I have to talk. We wear masks in hallways. Or, you know, we, uh, if I had, wasn't talking to you, I'd have a mask on. So uh, it, this, is, uh, this has been serious since day one. It should have never gotten political. We as leaders owe it to people not to turn things in a political debate but a debate on how we protect one another as a community. When we're at war, we're at war with the enemy together. And right now we're at war with a virus. It's a different type of enemy, right. but it does tremendous harm for our country and our ability to keep our economy open. Okay. We, have to, we have to do it. One more quickly, if I could. Uh, uh, something that's crucial to development here in Maricopa is the, is the lower Santa Cruz uh, floodplain. Mm -hmm. Getting some of the of our city removed from that floodplain. Is there uh, progress uh, with FEMA towards getting that uh, that floodplain uh, redrawn uh, so that uh, we can have additional areas to develop here? And if I know the city and the uh, Pinal County are working hard with that. I've been working more with the uh, um, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, but we have had impact at work with FEMA, uh, but. Uh, I tried to assist where it went asked to assist with FEMA. With the Armory Corps of Engineers, we've been very aggressive uh, in trying to make sure that we, what we have, have the ability to do is get that uh, appropriation money to them and be able to, to address that situation. And so we, we, I, I don't know how many meetings I've had with the Army Corps of Engineers and the city and the, and the county and stuff. On the other side, side of that, though, if they're, they're, anytime they run into a roadblock, potentially with FEMA, or the FEMA has to be um, moved along faster, that's where I can uh, address that issue because it's a regulatory change um, and their vision uh, of what regulations need to be in place on that floodplain, the size of the floodplain, and obviously it affects a large amount of land in, in the city of Maricopa. Right. Uh, we want that dealt with appropriately, and we want the Army Corps of Engineers to protect that land if uh, FEMA won't change its minds. Okay. So, and then downstream of there, you know, that that's in today's dollars, that, that entire uh, process going all the way down to the border, uh, that, that floodplain is a billion plus. Oh, yeah. And that, that money is, there's a lot of money in, in, in the um, infrastructure bill to be able to address some of these issues also, because, uh, you know, the priority for the Army Corps of Engineers is our military and floodplains and, and things like that. So we, we are working with them. Um, I have six or seven projects of uh, Army Corps in the district right now. And uh, Maricopa has come a long way in the last couple of years, uh, that floodplain down there, and we'll continue to put pressure on that. Thank you, Congressman. I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot, Have a great day. You too. Bye, Bye. now.